Welcome to Ask Cadence, everyone. My name is Pete Wright, and I'm sitting around the table here with Jay Christensen once again. Hello, Jay. Hi, Pete. How are you? I'm doing very well. And John Patton, hello again. <clears throat> hello, Pete. It's good to be here. Uh, and so we have a problem card from a, uh, a very recent course, um, a project management course, and I think this is a, an interesting and fertile topic. The project is off to a slow start. We can't gain traction. How do we get it moving? Now, we're assuming the project has been approved, team is in place, activities just aren't taking off, right? I mean, is that, is, am I reading that right, John? Yes, it's a, it's a common problem that people run into. In fact, I, I see it as one of the biggest problems in the world in project management. And as you know, I'm, I'm um, outside uh, international uh, a good 50% of the time, uh, sometimes a little more. So I've seen this both in the United States and abroad. Um, there is um, really not enough focus nowadays on a life cycle approach to project management. Uh, or the early phases of the life cycle are poorly defined. Start, uh, get approval, then plan the project, then execute and control. What, why, what is that? A, I don't mean to stop you, John, but what is that a function of? Why are people moving too fast through these early stages? It's a very American uh, approach, uh, Pete. Uh, North and South uh, uh, Latin American approach is uh, to get started on a project immediately, not even knowing what the outcome is, is is really going to be you're starting it with insufficient information because um, uh, we really value implementation activities, getting something done. Whereas in other parts of the world, there's a more balanced view. In fact, if we could balance different, uh, different uh, world views of where value is in the project management life cycle, uh, we would have a winner. And we think we have here at, at Cadence in, in our uh, life cycle, which puts uh, the initial uh, phase, uh, often commonly described in America, into three phases, think, study, and research. And what we often find, the first thing for a person to check uh, is what phase is the project in, in the life cycle? It may have been uh, authorized to go ahead without sufficient definition. And that's typically uh, getting definition on what the scope of the project is. Uh, at least high level, level scope, we call the research phase. So if you're running into all sorts of questions about, you know, they're unknowns, we don't have answers, that's typical on any project, but if it's to a high degree, lots of questions like this, and there are technical alternatives uh, and approaches still open, not selected, uh, then your focus is really to, to concentrate on research phase activities. And at least those sorts of questions happen in an appropriate place outside of project implementation. I think there are some cases, uh, I have seen this demonstrated a number of times, where project people are assigned a project, but they are not given the, the reason behind the project, the business need that the project is attempting to address. So they have difficulty marketing the project to people who are providing resources that are needed to make progress on the project. Okay, so here it comes down to uh, just some standard project management approaches. Determine the life cycle and your appropriate activities. If there isn't a project charter or profile which explains why we're doing the project, get that done right away. If the project was authorized, check the levels in the organization where it was authorized and ensure that word has been passed down to those levels of the organization where you will be asking for resources um, to get the project uh, uh, team assembled. Now, um, number two, step number two is uh, if you only have three to four people and you need ten for the project team, don't wait to establish your, sta your weekly status meetings. PACE on a project is established with weekly status meetings. So what are you going to discuss in those status meetings? Getting scope defined for the project. People are going to raise issues and problems and unknowns and concerns. Every one of those need to be documented and assigned to a team member for investigation. So here we are, we're using the resources that we have productively to make progress on getting to scope definition. Yeah, I always so would like to support what you're saying, John, by having the project manager and the team identify, if they can, a high-level champion 
that understands the business need and that can help market the project to the organization from their level of authority and influence in the company. And that helps support the project people in getting answers to the issues that you have expressed a few seconds ago. Well, Jay, uh, that, that's fascinating to me. Um, I think I overlooked that. That should be one of the first steps uh, to ask the question, who is sponsoring this project? If your project has been assigned and you can't identify the sponsor, then you should immediately go back to your boss and say, why are we doing this project? Boss, are you the sponsor? Is the sponsor in our organization? Is it outside? Uh, uh, where is this project originating from? Uh, because we, uh, all projects are done for a reason, and it's critical nowadays, uh, especially in this economy, that, there's a, that there is support for the project, um, authorization support. Let me move on to, uh, to the next step. Uh, really critical to establish pace for the project, and that is every week, after the status meeting for the first eight weeks of the project, the project manager should issue a status report. Now this status report is at minimum to the managers of the people who've been assigned to the project team, to the managers who will supply people to the project team, and to the sponsor. On this status report, they cover what we call the four what's. What we did last week, what we're going to do this week, what the problems are, and what we're doing to resolve the problems. Uh, please realize that if you write this on Monday afternoon, you are making some promises as to what you will have done by next Monday. And that creates some good pressure on the project manager and on the existing team members to be active immediately this week on the project. And you know, you know, you can see the pressure mounting by Wednesday or Thursday to get these things done, and even a decision uh, to work a Saturday, or uh, you know, if, if if things are not getting done, because we want to be, be able to say we made progress on Monday. Otherwise, this project will keep stumbling along. Well, it's interesting. I I wonder if that process alone uh, tends to slip and and sort of fall outside of view because. What do these functional managers need to know with what this team member is doing? Shouldn't they be more interested in just how they're performing? Know that they're working on this project, they're performing well, and that's what they need for a review. But as soon as you put what they're doing on there, that level of accountability rises. Yes, it does, Pete. And, and it's, it's, it's really the task work that one or multiple people are, are doing on a project. So here are the obstacles we're taking on this week. Here are the solutions to the problems that we had last week you know, on, on the page. And you can see uh, a scope uh, taking form and interest being created. And there may be cases where the team started off without knowing exactly what this project should be doing. And as they are completing tasks, they arrive at more of an understanding about what the project is intending to accomplish. So the team needs to be flexible each week in changing as necessary their direction so that they can continue to make project uh, progress, but still uh, delivering the business need. Yes, now I, you know, Jay, I want to make sure that our listeners are interpreting what you just said correctly. Uh, this, there is always a drive on the project manager's part towards a defined scope. So we don't want people following the will of the wisp through the swamp here, uh, taking on any definition or redefining the project on a weekly basis. Our activities are towards getting to a final uh, definition of scope. Correct. Uh, but there may be cases, uh, as you indicated earlier, where the research phase either was not done or not done completely. So the team is actually engaged in research phase activities. Yes, and, uh, and those um, really should result in decisions being forwarded to the sponsor uh, so that the um, um, results from those decisions uh, cause project definition. Now, we're going to use, we do need to get into formal planning at some point here. So uh, the guideline I like to use always is the Pareto rule, 80-20. It's easier to get 80% of your team members fairly quickly and we acknowledge that the final 20% of that team may be a little more difficult. There may be delays in getting them. 
But uh, as soon as we, uh, I, I would like it not to go beyond eight weeks. There, there is a more serious problem if you can't get the team in a couple of months. So uh, if we uh, have 80% of the team at four weeks, at three weeks, at six weeks, then we're going to go into formal planning. And this is uh, where, uh, according to our approach and method, we get everybody into a, a room and go through the, uh, the steps of planning a project. Then we can go out with that project to get signed off by the sponsors, and that's where cost, schedule, and performance, with their signatures, get cast in concrete. Everything after that point would change through a change order on, order on the project. And so there we are. So that's uh, there are some uh, some sound steps to get your project up and running, and to do so in in a way that essentially reframes the project into a life cycle approach. Uh, it, it's what and, experienced project managers do, Pete. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it, and you give the opportunity essentially even even after a project has been formally approved, you actually are giving the opportunity to make that go no go decision again. Mm -hmm. Particularly if it's off to a slow start, if you don't have enough information. That's correct, as Jay says. If this project has been stalled in the research phase, there will be a series of go go no go decisions. Yeah. And then a final sort of, you know, it's defined. Let's go and and plan our implementation. Well, thank you for the conversation and the discussion, uh, John, Jay, uh, and for all of you listening, thank you for downloading. Please continue to do so with uh, much uh, gusto and enthusiasm. And uh, until next week, this has been Ask Cadence.